Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook, where we take a look at our favorite markets and formulate an attack plan for tomorrow's trading. Tomorrow being the 21st, wrapping up the week, going into Friday. Uh, overall, we've had some pretty big movement today. Uh, a lot of the markets weren't really able to accomplish a whole lot, uh, just except the Euro. The Euro was definitely the big mover today on all of the news that happened, and just a monster rally uh, on the Euro on up. Now, before we jump on in, as always, make sure to swing on over to slingshotfutures.com, scroll down, and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. That's going to let you sign your email up on our email list so that you'll be notified every time one of these videos comes out. Along with that, inside of that email, we talk about different things like Forex, cryptocurrencies, futures, stocks, all kinds of different plays that we're potentially keeping our eyes on uh, that you may be interested in as well. So make sure to sign up for that. Uh, now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to click on the Live Trader Subscription and Trial Info that will let you sign up for a one-day trial in the room. You can sit down with us, hang out for a day, and see what we're all about. You'll get to see our charts, you'll get to see the trades that we take, you'll be able to hang out with all the members. It's a really cool way to see what we're all about and see if we fit uh, what you're looking for. Now, of course, as always, uh, if you do enjoy the live trading, you can sign up for it specifically with a monthly or weekly subscription. And if you decide to join as a full-fledged VIP member, you get the live trade room as part of the package. Now, starting off on the Euro, uh, I feel like we're starting off with the best one first, but uh, the Euro had a monster rally today. Uh, around 8.30, uh, once we started getting that news at 8.30, and then on forward, it really did not stop rallying until we hit around 12 o'clock. And then from there, it just kind of died off a little bit, went to sleep, and I, I mean, I can't really blame it. After that amount of sprinting, they got to take a break after a little while. Now, the overall objective, we still have an unfilled objective above us at 16,985, right at that 1,700 level, and that is a big 7,000 mark. Those big 7,000, 6,000, 5,000 marks, those tend to be, uh, or at least tend to have a lot of movement around them. Now, with the unfilled objective to the upside and buyers really kind of getting their first pullback of the entire rally up, they haven't really had any other options aside from really shallow pullbacks. It's the first one that we've had that even has come close it, in this in this case <clears throat> excuse me below the moving average this is the first time the buyers are really getting a shot at getting in conservatively and the fact that we're getting a wedge and we're attempting to break out of it right now that gives a pretty big clue that we have a potential final leg uh, that we could be looking for to the upside and that objective looks pretty juicy at 16.985. Now, what I would really like to see is a buy off of 16,521 and one more pullback at a trap underneath these double bottom lows, uh, trap in and then bounce right back up. But given the overall wedge and the breakout that we're seeing right now, we may not even get a chance for that uh, in a possible overnight grind to the upside. If we do get a little bit more pullback, though, that 16,520 all the way down to 16,035, 16,040 would be a beautiful area for potential buying pressure on up. But with that, uh, again, with that upside objective not too far away, and we're already breaking above a descending wedge on the way up, we might not get another chance to jump on in except for right now. So we'll have to play it by ear, but the overnight session has, uh, has plenty of potential uh, for the euro. <clears throat> Switching gears over to gold. Now, gold looks, uh, for the most part, pretty good, but this is one of those markets that really didn't accomplish a whole lot. We had a cycle to a new high, then a big cycle down with a three push wedge bottom. Quick snap reversal on up back to new highs, and now they're just kind of floating back lower again. The final level of support that buyers really have going for them is going to be a combination of 41.6 along with rising support at a possible wedge bottom. And if that starts breaking down, we may easily be headed right back down to the lows and continue the cycle. New high, new low, new high, and a new low as long as we can start breaking through that. Until we break through those levels of support, though, we still have to have a slight bias on the buy side. Uh, and one of those first areas is going to be off that 41.6 and the wedge low. Uh, so the initial play that I'd be looking for is something along the lines of this. If you can get the price to skip off of it and turn back higher as proof that the buyers are coming in off of those lows. But if it does begin to fail, if you see it come down, it'll probably rattle around a little bit. But if it takes a dip underneath it, then pops back up, that could easily be an area of resistance to sell right back down again to new lows. So a little bit of a mixed bag here on gold uh, with the overall sort of range emphasis on things. But, you know, that said, it still looks pretty good for a potential bull bounce, if not all the way up to new highs, at least an attempt at monthly uh, resistance at 45.4. 
On crude oil, crude oil, another one of those markets that had a lot of movement, but not a whole lot accomplished. Uh, we had a new high of the day, new low, new high. They tried getting a new low at around five o'clock, failed and popped back up to a new high uh, once again, and then turned back down. And that did create a little bit of a head and shoulders up here before that big pile drive to the lows. But in cycle, we had a new high into a new low, into a new high, into a new low, a couple legs down to a new low. Yeah, there's another good chance here, the inverse of gold potentially rising back up again. Now, we do have the same situation. We have a wedge on this as well, which is attempting to break out of the highs. And we have had three big pushes to the downside here, which may signal a near end of this downside trend. Now, notice I said near end. This may not be the end of the downside trend, but if it starts returning back to the lows, the assumption is that there are no more sellers that are willing to take it lower, or at least not very far and there are going to be buyers accumulating that bottom to turn the market back up. If we can get a rally back towards the highs, there are a couple levels of resistance that sellers can definitely utilize to their advantage, if not for a bigger move, at least for a scalp. 47.16 is that first area of resistance. We had the earlier lows coming in there uh, all pretty uniformly, and then it broke and started using it as resistance. So a retest of that location would potentially be a nice area of resistance. Along with that, we have yesterday's closing point, as well as 47.28, 60-minute resistance coming into play right in the middle, and that looks to be right around a 50% pullback as well. So you have three different levels stacking up all in the same place that could easily cause a bounce there as well. And then the final line in the sand, if it does rally all the way back up would be 47.54 and if, the, if that begins to fail and can't turn the market down far enough we could easily break and use that as support uh, just on the other end right so basically just take the gold analysis and flip it over uh, we have the exact thing uh, the exact same thing but in the opposite spectrum uh, so a little bit of an area of interest here on crude but uh, again we need to wait for a little more info I would love to see a test at the bottom for a potential buy scale in off of the lows otherwise waiting for a little more info and possibly selling 4716 and if it can break above it we may have some support levels on the way up and then finally, the S&P. Uh, the S&P really didn't get a whole lot done. And, you know, given yesterday's movement, I mean, I can't really say that I blame them. Uh, this rally up yesterday was massive. And the fact that they finally pull back in the overnight session, you better believe that buyers are going to use that opportunity to buy in and shove the market back up to a new high. And that is exactly what they did. Uh, now, it did get one more pullback before a finalized push up. And then from there, we really just kind of cycled back down and created a little bit of a range. The range highs and range lows do have a little bit of a breakout on both edges, but for the most part, they fit pretty well with a high at 74 and a low at 69.5. Now, that may widen out a little bit, and you may see something along the lines of the high ending up at 76 and the lows ending up uh, right around eh, 66, 75 or so, and maybe even higher or lower. But for right now, this middle range here looks pretty good, and it is still containing price, so I'm going to give that one the overall bias for now. Uh, the overall movement is a range. After we had the big move up yesterday into today, it's expected to see a little bit of a slower price day, and that is exactly what we did get, so buy low, sell high but with the overall emphasis from yesterday and several days before that being so massively bullish it makes much more sense to wait for a deep pullback buy off the lows and push back to the highs than it does selling high hoping it comes back down so the bias is definitely buy side buying low rather than selling high the selling at the highs that i would like to do on profit targets more than anything else but 69 and a half down to 66 and three quarter are those areas in the bottom edge that we can look for a rally back up and of course, if we break the lows, we could see a potential trap underneath that at 65 half. Overall though, I would much rather be on the buy side and with the range, we know what to do. We talk about it all the time, buy low, sell high, stay out of the middle. And that is exactly what I'm planning to do. Right now we're in the middle, so we sit on hands and wait until it gets to one of those extremes. So that's going to do it for the outlook. Now, in terms of tomorrow's news, we have a very light news calendar. We have some news coming out of Canada at 8.30 uh, and that's going to be the core CPI and the core retail sales. But that's it. There are no big news announcements tomorrow for the U.S. or really anywhere else. It's just Canada. So that may have some impact on the U.S. markets, namely crude oil and maybe some of the indexes. But chances are tomorrow might be a little bit of a slow one. And we are going on Friday, going into the weekend. It might be an excuse for a lot of traders to come in early, get the job done, and then leave for that nice weather, hopefully, over the weekend and uh, call it quits. So expecting tomorrow to be a little bit of an early in, early out. We'll have to wait and see, of course. But as always, make the plan, trade the plan, follow those rules, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Until next time, we'll see you all then.